everyone, it's Gabriella Peroni here for CMSC Media, and we're actually at Crown Peak Empower 2019, and I'm speaking with Harry Gali, the Digital Marketing Manager at Air Charter Service. How are you today? There. Not bad, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Good. So, why don't you tell us a bit about your company to start off? So, Air Charter Service is a global aircraft charter company, mm -hmm. so specializing in private jets, commercial jets, and cargo. Uh, Actually, the company started off doing cargo charters uh, oh, around the cool. world. So, um, you know, it, it sort of stemmed from cargo and moving mm -hmm. humanitarian aid and, and relief. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after that, they realized, well, hold on. The companies that we're moving this for have to move these execs over from point A to point B mm -hmm. because of business meetings and so forth. And um, so, yeah, so we're primarily an aircraft charter company. Yeah. We have 24 offices actually now 25 offices uh, globally across the world. So everything from uh, LA to Sydney and cool. all the major cities in the world. And we have about 500 staff across the world and turning over in the approximate range of about $700 million. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> and um, what do you see as the most challenging digital experiences to come, would you say, in the market? So at the moment, um, it's a great question because mm -hmm. part of my remit is looking at current technology, yeah. And, and future technology like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the biggest challenge I find is actually, first and foremost, is a CMS system that allows you to deliver the best or the greatest experience to your end users. Mm -hmm. Now, I've worked with quite a few CMSs over time. Uh, some promise that they're fully SaaS solution when they're actually hybrid. Uh, or actually, we get to a point where you spend so much money trying to fix your current CMS or current issues mm -hmm. that you're not really embarking that infrastructure or that money that you're saving on technology. Now, one thing that we're looking at in the future is the future of sort of voice. Uh, mm -hmm. So more and more now we're sort of seeing people on Alexa, Siri, and Google. For example, we had a, a customer the other day who was, "Hey Siri, how much is a private jet from venues to Vegas?" Mm -hmm. Now, wouldn't it be great if uh, it can pull relevant content to your website? Um, so we looked at how do we get that and leverage that onto top of Google. So yeah. looking at the voice search, um, I think that's going to be our core focus over the next sort of two, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, machine learning at the moment, I think is a little bit overhyped in the current state. Yeah. I would say about five years down the line. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw a, a recent video created by this young chap about Mario. So do you remember the old Mario game yeah. where, where you had to sort of jump over, collect the coin and the mushroom? Yeah. So they had this, this chap who sort of went through and did a manual sort of run through the game and then introduced machine learning and AI into it and then oh. and sort of just ran that over time. And then you found towards the end, Mario was just jumping across, collecting all these mushrooms and all these coins yeah. and speed time and completed the game. And you're thinking, wow. Now, for a customer, when they get to the point where they feel comfortable on that, in that perspective, like I was watching that, I think that's sort of five years down the line. At the moment, I think we're still a bit early, and I think customers and people just feel like it's maybe too much information, and you know, am I, am I GDPR, GDPR compliant, and yeah. have I got consent? So yeah, I think AI machine learning at, in about five years will be be the step. Yeah, yeah, those are some great points. It's yeah. just kind of like ease them into it, right? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah customers have to feel comfortable when they're talking to you as a company or using your service online or mm -hmm. an app or then a word of mouth for example they yeah. need to be sort of engaged and, and comfortable yeah definitely definitely agree and speaking of that how much is privacy and governance part of your customer experience would you say and how does that fit in oh, uh, massively so especially in the industry that we're in so mm -hmm. if you're talking to high work and high work individuals you're talking about you know, VIP clients governments so they talk about digital trust. Yeah. So when they're using your services, whether it be the app, whether it be talking to uh, the salespeople, mm -hmm. us guys, when you hold that much information on these high network individuals or these type of companies or these type of people, you need to make sure that they feel trusted, that yeah. it's handled correctly, that you've got the necessary process in place, where they, they at the click of a finger, say, I want to know what you have on me. Yeah. Well, we've taken enough steps, I think, GDPR came in with a wrecking ball and started saying, you know, get everything done now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we got to a point where we're like, well, we better start listening. <laughs> so yeah, I, th and I think the company was sort of taking a laid back sort of approach. And then it got to a point which was like, no, no, if we don't sort this out, 
we are going to get fined heavily. And um, I think there is still wiggle room in terms of what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. So I think we're still trying to find the boundaries and you know whether that's through our head of data team, whether that's speaking to the ICO directly. So it plays a massive part and I think it'll be a continual, continual sort of evolution over the next sort of five, ten years. Yeah, it'll be a continued journey for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Harry. That's all I have for you.